Hi everyone, it's Alice and today we're gonna do the comfort reading tag. I was tagged by one of my favorite booktubers, a book olive, and I will leave a link to her channel down below. You gotta check it out if you haven't. She's got great recommendations and I think maybe she tagged me like five months ago, <laughs> but we're finally doing it and today we're just gonna soak it all the comforting books, which Looking at the state of the world, I think we all need. Now I did realize while looking for books for these questions that I don't necessarily read that many like lighter or comforting books really. I tend to gravitate towards more like heavy and dark stuff, but I do love a good cozy book every once in a while and so those are the ones that we're gonna focus on today. Although I have chosen some books that might not be comforting to everyone, but they are comforting to me. Alright, so the first question is The Kettle's On. A book of steadfast comfort, always there for you, makes any day better, like a cup of tea or your favorite warm drink. And for this I have chosen The Secret Garden by Frances Hodgins Burnett and I've chosen this because this is my favorite book from childhood. This is the first book that I can actually remember reading. I know I read other books before this but this is the first one that I remember being really sucked into and like falling in love with. The story is about a girl named Mary who grows up in India and then her parents die and so she's shipped off to live with her uncle in England and when she gets there she's not the nicest child really. But it's all about her sort of discovering the secret garden and then there's also something going on in the house and there's like a little bit of a mystery. And I just find this very very comforting even though there are parts of this that haven't like aged super well. The second question is Grandmother's Quilt, a book that reminds you of a loved one or a comforting book that was given to you or read aloud to you by someone dear. So for this I have to say Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone because this book and all of the books in this series when they came out were given to me by my grandmother. Like she bought me the first book and it's one of those books that like really expanded my reading life I feel like I was these are some of the books that really made me fall in love with reading and I was always so excited to get them for Christmas and so whenever I read these books I always think of my grandmother. I guess they were also from my grandfather but it was very clear that like my grandmother is the one that picked them out. <laughs> Next it says Warm Spices, a book with particularly vivid prose or imagery, a story comforting in its richness, depth, or vibrance. So for this I have chosen a book that is just so well written. I read it not too long ago and it's just so good. The story itself is probably not that comforting but then it also kind of is because it really pulls you in. It's a fantastic story that kind of breaks your heart at the end but that's life. It's Hamnet by Maggie O'Farrell and I don't have the physical copy with me because I lent it to a friend because it's so good. It's a historical fiction novel and the story is set in England in the 1580s I believe and we mainly follow this woman who is considered quite odd in the town where she lives but she meets this writer and they fall in love and they have children. Now the writer, although he remains nameless throughout the book, is Shakespeare and the story is about how their child, Hamnet, dies. Like we find that out in the beginning of the book and the story sort of leads up to his death and it's all about how his death inspires the play Hamlet. There is so much more to it than that but that's like the gist of it and it's just such a good book. Like the setting is great, the atmosphere is great, the characters are wonderful, and it's just such a lovely book. The fourth question is Candlelight, a book that keeps you going or encourages you when things feel dark. For this I have chosen a truly comforting book, although it is a little bit heartbreaking as well. It's Miss Benson's Beetle by Rachel Joyce, and this is just such a wonderful book. The story starts off in 1950s England where we meet this woman who is middle-aged and she is just very unhappy with her life. She feels like she hasn't gotten what she wanted out of her life so far and she's given up on a lot of her dreams. But then one day she just decides to chase this dream she has of finding this beetle. <laughs> and so she decides to go to the other side of the world to find it and she brings with her this assistant who turns out to be a little bit different than maybe she thought and for a while they don't get along that well but they do head off on this adventure together and 
a lot of things happen and as usual things do not go according to plan. I think what I find so encouraging about this book is the friendship between the two characters in here. Like they come together, they're vastly different but they come together in this unlikely friendship and they come across so many obstacles but they just keep going. Like no matter what happens they just keep going and they really fill each other out and it's just a really heartwarming book and I just... Like, I want to hug this book. It's so good. Then we have got Laugh Medicine, a book that makes you laugh out loud or grin widely, coming to the rescue on the gloomiest days. I had to go with The Smoke Hunter by Jacqueline Benson for this because there is no way you can read this and still be gloomy. It's historical fiction and it starts off in London in 1898 if I remember correctly, and we meet this woman who is an archaeologist, but she's very frustrated with her lack of opportunity in that area, like no one will hire her basically because she's a woman, and so she's working as an archivist, <laughs> and in the office one day she comes across this map, and she thinks that if she can find what this map leads to, it will make her career, and her career will be set, and so she steals it sneakily. She takes the map, heads off, but then She's not the only one who's interested in this map and other people want to find what it leads to and so they find out that she has stolen it and starts chasing her as she heads to the other side of the world. This is just a fantastic adventure story and I say this every time that I mention this book but it's like a mix between Lara Croft, Indiana Jones and The Mummy and how can you not love that like you can't be gloomy when you're reading a book like this because it's just so much fun it's not the perfect book but it'll really like pull you in and you can get lost for a few hours or however long it takes you to read the book and it's just a delight question number six is in bed all day you've got your warm drink a cozy blanket maybe your grandmother's quilt what do you read when you're curled up in bed all day or for a couple of hours anyway for this, I went with The Secret History by Donna Tartt, which is... I don't know if you could really argue that the story of this is particularly comforting, but it's one of my favorite books, and there is something comforting to rereading a favorite, I feel. This is one of the few books that I have actually reread, and there's just something... I think there's something about revisiting a familiar story that is really comforting, and the idea of just like sitting in bed all day reading this that is the dream. I'm assuming most of you know what the story is about, but if you don't, it's basically a story about this group of college kids who attend this elite and prestigious Greek program at their school, and their professor is really, like, charismatic, but also really eccentric. And in the beginning of the book, you find out that the group is going to kill one of their own, so they're going to kill one of their friends. And the story is basically just the lead-up to it, and... For me, this is just a perfect book. I know it's not for everyone, but it's like the dark academia book, and I think it's amazing. Then we have got Endless Comfort, a book that brings you solace no matter how many times you reread it. And I've cheated a bit here because I've chosen a book that I haven't actually reread, but it's one of those books I'm convinced would still be as perfect if I reread it, and it's Sweet Bean Paste by Durian Sukagawa. The story in here is set in Japan and we follow this man who is quite down in life. He's really depressed and he's very unhappy and he spends his days working in this dorayaki shop. And then one day this older lady comes into the shop and asks if she can work there. And although he sort of says no at first, she ends up working there and they become friends. And it's just the beginning of this blossoming, wonderful, unlikely friendship. I think I just find books about friends really comforting and there's something about unlikely friendship that I just love. I think it's amazing to read about. And I do also feel like it's very comforting when a book like has a lot of food in it. Like there's something really comforting about reading about food. And in this one, there's a lot of that. It's like all friendship and all food. Next, it says Portable Hope, a book that restores your faith in humanity, faith in life, faith in yourself. A book that says it's going to be okay, the world is full of good things, and tomorrow will be better. Now, I think I'm a little bit pessimistic to be honest because I never really feel like this, but I immediately thought of this book, This Green and Pleasant Land by Aisha Malik. And the reason for it is that there's one character in particular in this book 
that kind of restores my faith in humanity, even though she's fictional. And I am convinced that if everyone could be a little bit more like her, the world would be a much better place. Now, the story in here is about a man who loses his mother in the beginning of the book, and his mother's dying wish is that he is to return to his faith by building a mosque in the little English village where he lives. And he doesn't really want to do it, but he sets off to try and this, like, throws this little community into an uproar because people have a lot of opinions and all of that. You know how it is. And it's like a small English traditional community, which causes a lot of issues. Now, the reason this restores my faith in humanity a little bit is because of this one character that I mentioned. She is just so wonderful. Like, I don't even know how to, like, explain her, but she's just amazing. And I feel like everyone should read this book just to meet her. I don't know if it's just me, but I really do feel like this book is so underrated and it really shouldn't be. Like, it should be very, very popular. And it's a shame that not everyone has read this because it's just so good. Then we have got maybe my favorite question. It's a basket for your neighbor. Just as it's lovely to be comforted by books, it can be lovely to pass the comfort along. Imagining you were putting together a cozy comfort basket for your neighbor or a friend, loved one, take your pick. Which book or books would you include? First of all, a cozy comfort basket. Are you kidding me? Yes, please. Like that sounds amazing. Like I can't believe I've never thought about that, but what an idea. Can you imagine getting one of those with like all of your favorite things and then there are books in there as well? Like that sounds amazing and I would, I know it's not a part of the question, but I would put in like hot chocolate and some fuzzy socks, maybe some baked goods and loads of snacks, maybe a face mask. Like what a great gift. I really need to make that for someone. I know I could make one for myself also, but it's not the same. Anyways, the books that I would put in the basket are these two books. It's The Thursday Murder Club and The Man Who Died Twice, both by Richard Osman. Because I feel like these are books that most people would enjoy and they're really cozy. And yes, there's murder in them, but it's mostly just about these old people running around being amateur sleuths. And it's just really fun, but they're also just really, really good and enticing. And I feel like these are like the perfect gift books. This question made me think though, like do any of you actually like know your neighbors? Like when I was growing up and I was living in a house, we knew all the people on our street, but like now when I live in an apartment building in a big city, I don't know my neighbors at all. I don't know what they look like. Like I have no idea. Like even just the people on my floor were like three apartments on my floor, no idea. I think maybe, <laughs> I've seen a couple of them, but I very rarely pass them by. Like I say hello to everyone when I'm like leaving, like coming or going because it seems rude not to, but I don't know the people who live on my floor. I do know that the people who live there have children though, because they scream. <laughs> but other than that, no idea. We've made it to the final question and it's a walk in the woods. Though we'd like to stay curled up indoors with our books forever, or at least I would, I would like that as well, I'm not gonna lie. We've got to venture into the world again sometime. We technically don't have to do anything, but yeah, sometimes, I guess. A walk in the woods always helps me feel refreshed, unless I happen upon a spider or something, but let's not think about that. Tell us about a book with beautiful nature writing or a book that restores your peace. I had to go with Crazy for Birds by Misha Mayer Nick Blaze for this one, which might be my favorite like nature nonfiction book. Actually, this is a fully illustrated book all about different kinds of birds and what they get up to and their feathers and their eggs and all kinds of like bird stuff. And I just think this is a lovely book. Like it's such a colorful but also peaceful book in a lot of ways and you learn a lot and the information is like relatively surface level but it's just such a delight to read. And birds are really weird, man. They're such weird creatures, but they're also just so much fun to read about. Okay, everyone, those were all the questions and thank you so much to Obogala for tagging me in this because this might be my favorite tag that I've ever done. Like it was really fun and the questions were really good and I loved all of the books that I got to talk about and it was just perfect. Now I'd love to know your answers to basically all the questions, but maybe especially what you'd put in a cozy comfort basket to someone else, like not just the books you'd put in there, but like everything. 
And then I'd also love to know if you have any books that restore your faith in humanity because, ooh, it's hard these days with that kind of thing. It's hard to keep your faith in anything. So if you have any book recommendations, do let us all know. And yeah, as usual, links to my Patreon and other social media will be in the description and I will see you soon. Bye.